This summer, my son and I had the fun, exciting, and heart-pounding experience of riding on Universal Studios' Rip Ride Rocket. Complete moment of honesty. We passed the ride several times and we both admitted that we were extremely nervous about riding the ride, but we said that we were going to conquer our fear and we got on it anyway. Long story short, we conquered our fear and we also agreed that it would be a while before we got back on the ride. It was honestly one of the most insane rides we had ever been on, but we did it. So what made it so exhilarating, heart pounding, and overall amazing? We'll discuss all that and more in today's video as we take a deep dive into the science of roller coasters. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will discuss how roller coasters work through the relationship between gravity, potential energy, and kinetic energy. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is I will be able to describe and explain how roller coasters work through the relationship between gravity, potential energy, and kinetic energy. How do roller coasters work? You might think that roller coaster cars have engines inside of them that push them along the track like cars and trucks. While few roller coasters function like that, most apply the concept of gravity which converts potential energy into kinetic energy to move the cars along the track. If you pay close enough attention to most roller coasters, they mainly start out with a big hill. If you look closely at the roller coaster track that moves the cars up that big hill, you will see in the middle of the track on that big hill a chain just like the one we noticed on the rip rocket. You might have even felt the catch to the cars. That chain hooks to the bottom of the cars and pulls them to the top of that first hill, which is always the highest point on a roller coaster. It is also the highest point of gravitational potential energy. Once the cars are at the top of that hill, they are released from the chain and coast to the rest of the track, which is where the name roller coaster comes from. The gravitational potential energy is largely converted to kinetic energy throughout the rest of the ride. What do you think would happen if a roller coaster had a hill in the middle of the track that was taller than the first hill of the roller coaster? Would the cars be able to make it up this bigger hill using just gravity, or would other factors keep it from getting over this hill? Take two minutes to analyze the following roller coaster diagram and think, pair, and share your answers. We're ready to hear your brilliant responses. The underlying principle of all roller coasters is the law of conservation of energy, which describes how energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy is only transferred from one form to another. In roller coasters, the two forms of energy that are most important are gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. As we've discussed before in our Analyzing Kinetic and Potential Energy Graphs video, gravitational potential energy is the energy that an object has because of its height and is equal to the object's mass multiplied by its height multiplied by its gravitational constant of approximately 10 meters per second squared. So basically, gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. Gravitational potential energy is greatest at the highest point of a roller coaster and least at the lowest point. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has because of its motion and is equal to one half multiplied by the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity squared. Or otherwise, kinetic energy equals one half the mass times velocity squared. Kinetic energy is greatest at the lowest point of a roller coaster and least at the highest point of a roller coaster. Potential and kinetic energy can be exchanged for one another. So at certain points, the cars of a roller coaster may have just potential energy at the top of the first hill, or just kinetic energy at the lowest part of the hill, or some combination of kinetic and potential energy at all other points. As you can tell, there is a constant inverse relationship between potential and kinetic energy. As one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. The first hill of a roller coaster is always the highest point of the roller coaster because it requires the gravitational potential energy to be converted into kinetic energy to get through the rest of the ride. At the top of the first hill, a car's energy is almost entirely gravitational potential energy and almost zero kinetic energy because its velocity is zero or almost zero. This is the maximum energy that the car will ever have during the ride. 
that energy can become kinetic energy, which it does at the bottom of this hill when the car is moving fast, or a combination of potential and kinetic energy like at the tops of smaller hills. But the total energy of the car cannot be more than it was at the top of the first hill. If a taller hill were placed in the middle of the roller coaster, it would represent more gravitational potential energy than the first hill, so a car would not be able to ascend to the top of the taller hill. This would leave the roller coaster stuck on the tracks. Cars on roller coasters always move the fastest at the bottom of the hills. This is related to the first concept in that at the bottom of the hills, all the potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy, which means more speed. Likewise, cars always move the slowest at the highest point, which is the top of the first hill. Basically, gravitational potential energy is at its highest at this point and kinetic energy is at its lowest at this point. Quick check for understanding. Analyze the following roller coaster diagram. Pause the video and take two minutes to analyze on your guided notes where the greatest amount of potential energy would be and where the lowest amount of potential energy would be. Do the same for the highest and lowest amount of kinetic energy. Be prepared to share your variant responses. Now let's summarize roller coasters, gravitational potential energy, and kinetic energy by analyzing the following roller coaster diagram. As the roller coaster goes up the hill at point A, the potential and kinetic energy is equal. At point B, the roller coaster goes further up the hill and the potential energy increases while the kinetic energy decreases. At point C, the roller coaster is at the top of the hill. Notice that the potential energy is at its highest and the kinetic energy is at its lowest at this point. As the roller coaster goes down the hill at point D, the potential energy decreases and the kinetic energy increases. At point E, the roller coaster is at the bottom of the hill. Notice that the kinetic energy is at its greatest and the potential energy is at its lowest. Going back to that rip ride rocket ride we rode this summer, that first hill was huge. You can see and feel the chain links pulling us all the way to the top of the hill where the ride stopped for a brief moment where there was nothing but complete potential energy and no kinetic energy. This allowed us to see the whole entire Universal Studios theme park. And then there was a huge rush of kinetic energy as we went down that first hill. We felt our hearts sink into our stomachs. We went uphill, downhill, and through loops on the ride. So overall, it was A1. We kept going back and forth between potential energy and kinetic energy. And that first hill with all that kinetic energy was amazing. So you gotta check it out. Quick checks for understanding. Why is potential energy at its greatest at point C and at its lowest at point E? Why is kinetic energy at its lowest at point C and at its greatest at point D? Pause the video and take five minutes to write your responses. You got this. And that's our video for today. Now it's session off to see how proficient you are with describing and explaining how roller coasters work through the relationship between gravity, potential energy, and kinetic energy by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep, keep going, going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan this QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day.